Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So we're going to be now looking at chapter five, the effects of using the IT from the ICT uh, GCSE course. And we're going to start off by looking at 5.1, microprocessor control devices. So in your household, you may have many devices which may have microprocessors. Um, these could be used uh, to, these could be either labor saving devices uh, devices for leisure or for your convenience. So let's have a look at some of these devices that contain microprocessors in your um, house. So two obvious examples could be the washing machine and dish dishwasher. And these are labor saving devices. So you're not having to manually wash your clothes or your dishes. Um, and again, the advantages of doing this is you could be doing something else whilst your clothes have been washed or your dishes have been washed. Um, also, you may have a fridge. Actually, most people have a fridge in their homes and the fridge will allow you to preserve your vegetables, fruit, milk, eggs, dairy products for a, period, for a longer period of time. It will allow you to freeze uh, meat, um, which will let you cook your meat at a later date. And then you may have a burglar alarm in your house to provide security okay um, a microwave which will allow you to quickly warm up food um, rather than having to put it onto the cooker uh, you may have um, exercise machines cross trainers to maintain your fitness uh, consoles to provide leisure uh, cooking ovens so cookers or ovens um, where you can set um, your food to be cooked over a period of time um, under certain heat conditions. Um, so obviously using these devices will make it a lot easier for you. So let's have a look at why or what are the advantages of these microprocessor control devices. So these devices will do much of the housework chores for you. It will make it easier for you. One device I've missed out is the vacuum cleaner. So rather than having to brush up, um, the vacuum cleaner will make it easier to clean up your room. Um, so what we looked at is cooking food and washing clothes or dishes. Tasks do not need to be done manually, which means you do not need to be present whilst food is cooking. So maybe you can put something in the oven and come back in 10, 15 minutes. Uh, clothes are being washed. So yeah, again, you don't need to be present. Um, I put do not be in the house, but I think when you're cooking food, it's probably best you are in the house just in case something happens. Um, if you are, for example, using a dishwasher to wash dishes, then you can spend more time with your family and friends uh, rather than standing at the sink washing each plate one at a time. Um, more time for leisure activities or to complete work. So again, if you're using the dishwasher, maybe that gives you more time to spend on your console or more time to spend on your exercise machine or maybe interact with your peers, your friends. Can encourage a healthy lifestyle because a smart fridge analyzes your food ingredients. Uh, you do not have to leave your home to get fit. So, so let me say that again, you do, do not have to leave home to get fit. Um, and a burglar alarm will provide a sense of security. However, the disadvantage of using these devices is, let's say your dishwasher stops working, you may become over-reliant on these devices and you may become lazy because you're relying on these, these devices. So if this device stops working, then you will have to spend that time to manually wash those dishes. Um, can lead to unhealthy eating habits if you're relying on ready-made meals. So if you have ready-made meals, which are being warmed up in a microwave, you're obviously losing that art of um, cooking and you will be de-skilled and you may lead to you know, it may lead to an unhealthy lifestyle. So if you're cooking, for example, then you may be using fresh ingredients. So again, if you're using many of these devices, you may become de-skilled. Um, you may lose your, uh, yeah, so, and you may find it quite difficult to do certain tasks. Um, if you are staying in your home because you have, you have, you have your consoles, your exercise machines, for example, then you may lose out on that social interaction. Okay, so if you have your entertainment devices or physical fitness devices at home, you may not leave your home to see other people, which obviously would be a disadvantage. 
So here's a, diff, a typical exam question talking about microprocessor control devices in the home and how they have positive effects on people's lifestyles. So one of the positive effects of using these devices is that we can now set a cooker to switch on whilst we are out so that we arrive home to a cooked meal. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, but let's have a look at this question. So describe the positive effects of using other microprocessor control devices in the home. Microprocessor control devices are used to reduce the need for people to do manual tasks at home. The devices can be used for physical fitness, um, also increase the sense of security. So we're protected with burglar alarms or smoke alarms. People have more time to spend on leisure activities, on, for example, shopping or socializing. And microprocessor devices can be set remotely using a smart phone as well. So you can uh, control these devices from a distance. Uh, describe the advantage and disadvantage for microprocessor control devices. So again, notice the key parts when yellow. Uh, I'm not going to go through this answer. You can just pause and have a look. Uh, but obviously you can see these devices can be used to complete house home housework chores. Um, tasks would not have to be done manually, like washing clothes or dishes. Um, you can increase uh, leisure time. You don't, do not need to be present whilst tasks are being completed. However, you may become more lazy due to the dependence on these devices. You may be de-skilled. Uh, it may lead to unhealthy eating habits since you're not cooking food and using fresh ingredients and maybe using microwave to cook meals on a regular basis. Um, you could have a healthier lifestyle if you're using smart fridges and the burglar alarm will provide a sense of security. So again, some points have been repeated. Um, so some of these microprocessor control devices can monitor and control conditions in your home. So for example, a smoke detector will monitor uh, smoke. And if there's an increase in smoke, the buzzer will be alerted. So this is great, for example, if you're sleeping and you know you need to be woken up because there's too much smoke in your home. It could be maybe there's a fire that's been started and obviously you've been woken up by the smoke detector so you can um, leave the premises. So monitoring and controlling. So these devices will make use of sensors that will also always monitor the conditions. A smoke detector sensor will continue to check for smoke. The microprocessor will then compare the readings to a preset value. If the readings are above the preset value, then a microprocessor will send a signal to the actuator. The actuator in this case will be a buzzer and that will be that will go off and that will alert the occupants of the home um, to leave the premises um, or to take some sort of action. Okay, so advantage of a smoke detector can alert you to a fire, um, can be linked to the fire alarm. Okay, so the fire alarm will go off automatically if um, smoke has been detected. However, the disadvantage is it may be triggered accidentally if you're cooking and there's a bit of smoke. Uh, you need to be checking if they're working regularly. So maybe you're not, you're thinking, oh, I've not heard a smoke detector in a while. So it may be worth checking to see if it's actually working. Maybe it's not been working for a while. Uh, a security alarm is also designed to detect intrusion, such as unauthorized entry into a building. So this will provide constant protection and it could be a strong deterrent to anyone looking to um, gain unauthorized access to your home. It may be triggered by mistake, okay? And you may have to remember the, you may have to enter a PIN code to turn this off. And if you've forgotten the PIN code, then obviously the burglar system um, alarm will not be turned off. Security lights are a great safety feature for properties adding a simple determinant for intruders. So as someone approaches your property, the lights will come on, um, illuminating dark pathways or entrance ways. And again, this would put off burglars, but then these may be set off by pets or by weather conditions. The doorbell camera can be linked to your smartphone. When someone rings your bell, a trigger can be sent to your phone. You can then view who is standing in front of your door and you can even have a phone conversation with these people. So the recordings can be, can be made and can be stored onto your phone. Uh, you can see who's approaching your house. You can speak to the people outside your door uh, without being home. However, doorbell cameras may have a limited field of view. 
And again, these may be triggered by pets. So uh, let's have a look at microprocessor devices in monitoring and control and transport. So in a UAE nav example, what they're trying to do is they're trying to, and they've actually started this, uh, they're trying to use taxiless or driverless uh, taxis. So you can get into a taxi and it'll take you to a destination. So I know Tom, Tom in this car is a vehicle capable, capable of sensing its environment and operating without human involvement. Um, that could be a, a Tesla, maybe it could be used to come to a certain position. So what these cars will do is it will sense the distance between other cars and it's programmed to obey traffic rules as well. So driving within speed limits and obviously stopping at a red light. Okay, so an autonomous vehicle possesses the ability to view the environment in a 360 range. And it could be great for those people who are disabled and it can help with parking. So some cars will automatically park by themselves. Looking at the distance will use sensors to measure the distance. Um, and there's a potential to reduce the number of road accidents. And then passengers can maybe carry on with other activities whilst the car is self-driving however the initial cost of purchasing and maintaining the car may be very expensive could lead to more people on the road leading to congestion so obviously right now if you want to drive a car you need to have a license in order to get licensed you may need to take lessons and pass a test so if anyone can then drive these cars or you can use these types of cars it could lead to more people being on the road so right now, as it stands, you need to have a license. It could lead to job losses as delivery drivers may not be required or as discussed, uh, taxis are now, uh, or some taxis are driving without a driver, okay? Getting customers to a particular destination. So in the long term, if this is successful, they not there may not be a need for bus drivers, taxi drivers, delivery drivers, as um, these vehicles could deliver items, you know, to your house, you know, without the need of a driver. Uh, it could be security issues, hacking or loss of data, um, invasion of privacy and control, computers taken over, drivers may be de-skilled. So if you're relying on self parking systems and then you're driving a car without a parking system, you may find it difficult to park your car. Um, there is a potential of machine error and humans can adjust as well to change in environments. Or let's say for example, a cat or an obstacle, obstacle comes in front of the car. It would be interesting how a computer reacts compared to a human reaction. And 5.2, um, potential health problems. So potential health problems related to the prolonged use of IT equipment. So health risks could be with repetitive strain injuries, could be to your fingers and wrists. And this is from the repetitive clicking of a mouse and continually, continually typing. Back problems from sitting in the same position all day or having a bad sitting posture. And headaches at eye strain by staring at a screen continuously or having a bad uh, lit room. So prevention for repetitive strain injury could be to use a wrist support when typing and using a mouse. For back problems, using an adjustable ergonomic chair, um, ensuring a monitor is eye, at eye level. And for headaches and eye strain, maybe the use of an anti-glare filter to reduce the screen reflection. Uh, the use of LCD screens over CRT to reduce the amount of flickering. And you can also use IT equipment to minimize the health risks. So again, ergonomic chairs, which are adjustable, which adjust to the needs of the human, ergonomic design workstations and keyboards. Maybe if you want to reduce the amount of typing, you can use voice recognition software. Um, so for example, if you're writing reports rather than you have it using your fingers to type up, you can record um, that your content, which then can be and converted into a text document. Strategies to minimize health risks could be to take regular breaks, walk around and stretch your muscles and look away from the monitor at regular intervals. Um, potential health problems. So let's have a look at this question here. 
the developer spends a great deal of time using the computer for each of the statements given identify a health problem and describe a possible solution your answers must be different in each case so using a mouse for a long period of time could lead to repetitive strain injury and then as a solution you can use a wrist rest support or do some basic hand exercises sitting for too long in a position could lead to back problems and a possible solution could be take a regular break and maybe to use a, an ergonomic chair uh, employees working in the office are using computers for a prolonged period of time. Describe three items that an employee should be provided with to help reduce the health problems related to prolonged use of computers. So again, uh, reduce the health problems. So use an ergonomic chair, a monitor, which is at eye level. You can use wrist rests or anti-glare screens. And when you using computers, people can suffer from repetitive strain injuries. Describe the term RSI, including your answer the causes of RSI, so aches and pains in the hands and fingers, and it could be caused by with repetitive movements uh, or by con constantly clicking, typing on a keyboard. And three methods of reducing RSI, use a wrist rest, an ergonomic uh, keyboard, take regular breaks, um, exercise hand and fingers. Uh, there's a few more questions here, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just like to read the questions for yourself, and then you can pause the video and you can read. You can see the key parts are in yellow. So the use of this question is talking about um, the prolonged use of prolonged use of computers can cause several health problems when sitting down using monitors. Discuss strategies that you have developed to minimize health risks, which only relate to sitting down and using a monitor. So an ergonomic chair uh, to prevent back and neck pains uh, using the correct posture. The monitor could be tilted to reduce the neck angle. Uh, sitting at a reasonable distance to your computer um, to prevent the eye strain. You don't want to be sitting too close. Uh, using a flat screen monitor to reduce the eye strain. And also this will help reduce um, headaches. And the brightness of the screen could be equal to the brightness of the, the, brightness of the room could be equal to the brightness of the screen. Screen. So what you don't want to be doing is looking at a bright screen in a dark lit room. And also the user could have their eyes tested uh, regularly. And the blinds could also be closed to reduce the glare on a monitor. So I'm not going through the question in complete, but you can pause this, you can have a look at the question and then the answer if you would like. And again, the last question guys, um, I'm not going to go through this because some of the answers are quite similar to what we've already discussed. So you can pause this and you can have a read through the question and the answer. So we've come to the end of chapter five. Um, this is relatively a short chapter compared to other chapters. Uh, please join me in the next video tutorial where we will be looking at chapter six from the ICT um, GCC course, IGCC course. So please drop your comments below. I hope this video was useful. I hope the material was useful and please subscribe to the channel and share with your peers. Thanks again for your time and I'll hope you see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.